Mental Development, August 28, 1979. The Buddhist religion was founded by the Lord Buddha, who was renowned for his extraordinary energy, forbearance, attainment, wisdom, moral excellence, and teaching prowess. His Tamma teachings are perfect, truthful, worthy of respect and practice in every respect without exception because they are all essential for the development of moral excellence and are crucial for the gradual and total elimination of all the harms and poisons created by the Gilesas. It is like clean water washing away filth. Your jitta has been dirty since time immemorial, but you don't know what makes your jitta dirty and how long it has been dirty. The filth that makes your jitta dirty is thoroughly blended with your jitta like an arrowhead that is completely embedded in the flesh. These impurities and the jitta become one and the same thing, and it's not possible for you to differentiate them through ordinary reflection. The only way to find out is through the practice of jitta pawana, or mental development. The Lord Buddha became enlightened and purified his jitta with tamma practice and became the world's object of respect and admiration. It was the same way with the Savakas or noble disciples. When the Lord Buddha expounded his Tamma teaching to the first group of Savakas, the five ascetics, he taught them how to remove all the filth that was embedded in their jitta. The Savakas listened for true knowledge and insight. They listened with mindfulness and contemplation as they were all advanced practitioners. They were Uggartatanyo, capable of becoming enlightened very quickly because they had all developed Satibanya to contemplate on the Tamma teaching and they had already established a very high degree of Samadhi or calm within their Jittas to the point that made them think that they had already attained Nibbana. This is because this state of calm and coolness is totally devoid of the world. But the five ascetics couldn't see the subtle Gilesas that were still embedded within their Jittas. When the Lord Buddha taught them the Four Noble Truths, they could then see the true nature of all the Sapawa Tammas or phenomena, both inside and outside the Jitta. When the Venerable Anya Gondanya had achieved the first level of enlightenment, he uttered the following, Yang Jinsi Samudaya Tammang Zabbandang Nirota Tammang. Whatever comes into being must cease to exist. The Venerable Anya Gondanya was profoundly moved by this insight. The Lord Buddha responded by saying, Anyasi watapokondanyo. You are enlightened. Anya gondanyo tuleva namang ahoziti. From now on I shall call you Anya gondanya. Listening to the Tamma teaching is a prerequisite to practice and enlightenment, which is why the Lord Buddha had to teach the Tamma to the five ascetics. When the Lord Buddha practiced, he did it with his utmost ability, to the point where he passed out unconscious before he could become enlightened. When he taught the Tamma to the five ascetics, he told them how he himself had practiced because Tamma practice was indispensable for their own enlightenment, and this became the hallmark of his teaching. He didn't become enlightened by only studying scriptures like today's Buddhists who think they can become enlightened by studying alone. While listening to the Lord Buddha's discourse, the five ascetics also pondered on what he was elucidating and became enlightened right there and then. This is the way of studying, practicing, and becoming enlightened at the same time. Earlier on, I was talking about the jitta being contaminated with all sorts of filth and impurities because it hasn't been purified yet. It's so polluted that it's not possible to make out what the jitta really is. For this reason, you have to practice, because by practicing, you'll wash away all the impurities from your jitta. Starting from the practice of sila or morality, You'll gradually move up to Samadhi, which is essential for getting inside the Jitta before you can develop Banya. Samadhi will gather all the Gilesas into one place to temporarily stop them from contacting the visible objects, sounds, aromas, flavors, and tactile sensations, and consequently stop them from bothering the Jitta, which will then become calm and cool. Banya will then purify the Jitta by investigating the various phenomena that the Jitta becomes entangled with. What visual object is the jitta obsessed with? Is it the image of a man, a woman, or another visual object? Manya will have to investigate the image the jitta is attached to. Why must the jitta be obsessed with a beautiful body that causes it to become restless and agitated? Because this body has an alluring power and the jitta's perception is delusional. Banya has to investigate and analyze this body. Why must the jitta cling to it? Before, when the jitta hadn't seen this body, it didn't have any affection for it, but after having seen it, the jitta becomes agitated and restless. This body now sticks with the jitta all the time. What is the reason for this? 
Such is the way of investigation. In order to free the jitta from this obsession, you have to disassemble this body, starting from the hair of the head to the skin, the flesh, the sinews, the bones, and all the internal organs. You have to investigate thoroughly with Banya, repeatedly, many, many times over and over again. Then you must see its demise becoming a bloated corpse. Even when it's still alive, this body is full of filth. As far as beauty is concerned, this is the fabrication of the Gelesas, the master of deception that deceives the Jitta to see ugliness as beauty and become obsessed with it. This is how the deception works. Therefore, Banya has to correct this illusion. What is the cause of this deception, this perception of beauty? You must probe and examine in order to see the truth. Beauty isn't the truth, neither is loveliness nor attractiveness. You shouldn't be obsessed with them. They are not the truth, they are the Gelesa's deceptions. The Tamma is the truth that can be used to correct this illusion right there and then. You'll see that these bodies aren't really pretty or good-looking. It's just a very thin sheet of skin that wraps up this body that we call man and woman. It's not even as thick as a sheet of paper, and yet the Gelesa's deceive you to see it as good-looking. The deeper you investigate, the more filth you'll see. This is the truth. Where is the beauty that the Kilesas create? There is no such thing. The Kilesas just fool you. You have to see it this way because this is Banya. You have trusted the Kilesas and suffered for too long already. There are many kinds of Kilesas. There are those that fool you to see things as beautiful and have affection for them. There are those that mislead you to have incorrect perceptions that arouse your sexual desire which burns your heart. The Kilesas are fiery and deceptive. It is therefore necessary to eliminate them with tabma, which is the truth. Concerning beauty, where is beauty? Take a good look. You must look at the truth, which is the tabma. Your perceptions must not go against the truth if you don't want to be led by the gelesas, which oppose the tabma and yourself. You have to thoroughly and repeatedly investigate your body with satibanya, starting from the skin and going inwards. You'll see filth and impurity inside your body. You won't find any beauty or find a man or a woman in this body to love, because there is no such thing. It's only an illusion to deceive you. It's not the truth. This is what the body looks like when you're alive. Now let's see what it looks like when it gets old and dies. Even the body of a young man or woman when it dies is full of filth and it stinks. There's no worse filth than that of a dead body that becomes bloated and decomposes. This is the ultimate stage of particula or filthiness and the ultimate tamma that will absolutely eliminate the perception of beauty. You have to investigate to see this filthiness with Banya, which is the Tamma weapon that will totally destroy all of your wrong perceptions, which are the Kilesa's creation. You have to clearly see this truth. How then will the Jitta not withdraw itself from this incorrect perception? It can't do otherwise. This is the technique of Banya. Concerning sound, this is just the sound of wind coming from the mouth, both the good and the bad sounds that you hear, like when you're criticized or praised. If you don't interpret them, they'll be just the sounds of wind that flow in and out of your ears. When you hear good music, it is good only because your Gelesas interpret it to be so and you enjoy it. This is an illusion created by the Gelesas when, in fact, it is just the sounds of wind, like the sounds of wind blustering the leaves. They come and go. When you investigate the nature of visible objects, sounds, aromas, flavors, and tactile sensations, you only have to investigate just one of them. Choose the one that you like. When you see its nature, you'll see the nature of all the others as well. You also have to investigate the nature of your own body so that you can compare it with other bodies. You'll find that they are all the same. They are full of particula or filth and are just body parts. The body is not I or mine, not worth clinging to. If you cling to the body because you think it's your body, then you'll be nurturing the Gelesas to become stronger and hurt you more. This is the way to contemplate with Banya. What has been briefly discussed here is the way of developing Banya and the way of purifying the Jitta. Whatever object the Jitta becomes entangled with, you must sever it by investigating its true nature. You have to ignore the Gilesa's commands. 
Following Nicolaes' orders is deceiving yourself. Opposing Nicolaes' biddings blow for blow is Tamma. Investigating relentlessly and consistently an object's true nature is Banya. By alternately investigating and resting in Samati, you'll make the Jitta calm, firm, peaceful, cool, courageous, sublime, and magnificent. You must relentlessly investigate because it's absolutely vital for achieving freedom from Dukkha. You must not speculate about the Magga, Pala, and Nibbana. The practitioners during the Lord Buddha's time realized their Magga, Pala, and Nibbana in the mountains and forests. How did they practice? They practiced the same way that I have just told you, by strictly following the Tamma teaching without the slightest deviation, because the Tamma teaching hasn't deviated from the truth, which would make it impossible for you to eradicate the Kailasas with it. This Tamma teaching is suitable for the elimination of all the Kilesas and the purification of the Jitta, because it is the Matsima Bhadibhada, the middle way of practice which is suitable at all times, past, present, and future. Apart from this Tamma teaching, nothing else can do the job. There isn't a single Kilesa which is superior to this Tamma teaching. During the Lord Buddha's time, every practitioner used the Matsima Bhadibhada as the means of destroying the Kilesas all of them, from the Lord Buddha down to all the Savakas or noble disciples. The Gilesas were the same kind, greed, hatred, and delusion. You have them in your jitta, and you must apply the tamma in your investigation. You have to depend on the tamma weapon, Satipanya, to fight your opponent like in the Lord Buddha's time. The Gilesas will definitely disappear from your jitta just like they did in the past. It's definitely not the time and place that will eliminate the Gilesas. The Gilesas will only disappear from one place, which is the Jitta, at the time when Zatibanya has been developed to maturity. It is in the Jitta that the Gilesas will be eliminated. You have to earnestly put in your effort. You, who have taken up the robe, have to be tough, forbearing, and persevering like the Lord Buddha, your teacher and the founder of Buddhism. The Lord Buddha was well accomplished. To whom did the Lord Buddha pass on his accomplishment and diligent effort? He passed it on to you. Diligent effort is virya. Tsanda is delight. What do you take delight in? If you take delight in the Magga, Pala, and Nibbana, then you must take delight in your diligent effort. Tanda is to take delight in the task that will free you from Dukkha, which is your goal. Virya is the application of your energy into the practice. As the Lord Buddha's follower, you have to develop the four ittibada, or factors of accomplishment, tanda or delight, virya or diligent effort, jitta or concentration, and vimangsa or reflection. You need these four factors of accomplishment to become enlightened. If you, a Buddhist monk, can't develop diligent effort, then who in the world can? Buddhism is your most vital part. It's your duty as a Buddhist monk to develop tamma in your jitta with the aid of your sati, banya, satta, and virya. How can you not do this? Is this really possible? You have to be earnest and serious in your struggle with the kelesas. You have to really fight them. You mustn't be frivolous, because that wasn't the way the Lord Buddha and the noble disciples fought to free themselves from dukkha. You mustn't be weak, lazy, careless, or cut corners. You have to be genuine, earnest, and mindful with whatever task you do. Then when you meditate, your jitta will be also genuine, earnest, and mindful, because you have trained yourself this way. This is the way to do it if you want to acquire the Magga, Pala, and Nibbana, because they are in your jitta that is now surrounded by the Gilesas. When you have totally eliminated the Gilesas from your jitta, you won't have to ask where Nibbana is, because Nibbana is just a name. The term kilesas refers to the defilements in the jitta. Banya is wisdom or ingenuity, the indispensable instrument for the elimination of the kilesas, which are extremely cunning. But they can't be smarter than satibanya, sadha, and virya, which are the most vital tamma faculties. You have to be mindful, firm, and resolute with your practice by always concentrating your jitta on the present, the here and now. Don't speculate about the past, the future, where to get rid of the Gilesas, or where to attain the Magga, Pala, and Nibbana, which can't be found anywhere else but in the Jitta. The Gilesas themselves never speculate. That's why they manage to dominate the hearts of all sentient beings. When you practice to eliminate the Gilesas, why do you have to look for the time and place? This will only amuse the Gilesas. You have to probe right here. Let's do it even if it's hard and painful. If you're not dead, when you exert yourself, you'll have to experience some pain, whether doing a mundane or spiritual task. Every task demands effort. 
You know this very well, because you've worked before. You must not obstruct your practice by thinking that it's too difficult. You should think that to be free from dukkha is the most satisfying outcome. This is the practitioner's crucial way of thinking. You must be firm and resolute. If you haven't developed samadhi yet, you must develop it now. When the jitta goes outside, satibanya must pull it back inside. The jitta can be controlled. If satibanya can't control the jitta, nothing in this world can. Satibanya is stronger than the kilesas and the jitta. The jitta simply knows. It doesn't know good or bad, coarse or subtle, superficial or profound. It doesn't think. It just knows. It's like an insane person who does whatever he likes or whatever the kilesas tell him to do because he doesn't have any satibanya to look after himself and be responsible for his actions. All that he has is just the knowingness that is surrounded and controlled by the kilesas that make him behave in such a pathetic manner. An insane person doesn't have any sati or mindfulness and banya or wisdom. But you are not without any sati banya. You have sati banya just like other ordinary people. You are normal. But you want to develop your sati banya beyond the ordinary level for the purpose of eliminating the kilesas. You want to develop it up to the level of maha sati banya or supreme sati banya that will perform automatically, quickly, efficiently, skillfully, and smoothly. This is the result that will follow if you keep on practicing. In the beginning stages of practice, it'll be an uphill struggle. Eventually, your satipanya will become skillful, a result of your persistent practice. This satipanya will eliminate every kind of gilesa that is found within the jitta. Neither the time nor the place can prevent the tamma practitioner from attaining freedom from dukkha. Sandirtiko, or enlightenment here and now, is not reserved only for the Lord Buddha. It is for everyone who practices the tamma correctly. This is true in the past, in the present, and in the future, because the Tamma teaching that I have instructed you is for the purpose of eliminating the Gilesas and for achieving the Magga, Pala, and Nibbana. The Tamma is never outdated. It is the Gilesas that are outdated because they obstruct all sentient beings from gaining true happiness. As soon as the Tamma enters the Jitta, it will immediately make the Jitta calm and cool because it is not outdated. With the Tamma, you will never be outdated, especially the Tamma of Zadibanya that is ever-present and capable of destroying all the Gilesas. Please understand that every aspect of the Thamma teaching is designed for the removal of the Gilesas. So you must not take your practice lightly, because this is not the way to practice. It will slow your progress or destroy you due to your wrong understanding of the Thamma. You should earnestly practice. Don't be distracted by or have any interest for anything in this world because they are all anittang, dukkang, and anatta. You have experienced them through your eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind long enough to know that they are anittang, dukkang, and anatta. And so you shouldn't have any interest in or curiosity for them left in your mind. You haven't experienced any tamma yet, so you should now develop an interest for the tamma practice and experience its results. You'll then see which is better, the tamma or the world. If you don't know an object's true nature, how can you let go of it? You have to know first before you can let go. If you know a little, you'll let go a little. When you've experienced the results from your practice, you'll see that they are a lot more valuable than the things that you're attached to. When you've experienced the ultimate result, you'll let go of everything. Nothing in the three realms of existence is as valuable as a purified jitta that's absolutely freed from dukkha. When you've discovered the tamma to be far superior to the things that you're attached to, you'll gradually let go of them. When you've reached the ultimate tamma, you'll let go of everything. You'll also let go of the jitta. How do you get there? By persistent practice. When you take up the robe, you have a goal. You should practice to achieve that goal. You mustn't be weak in willpower, courage, or vitality. Sati is absolutely indispensable. You mustn't forget this. I have always told you this. You need banya occasionally, but you need sati all the time. The only exception is when you fall asleep. If you can develop your sati to be ever-present, your practice will rapidly advance.